This is Kilo, and today we're going to talk about the skeleton keys. Or, you know, at least that's what they're referred to here in North America as. And I actually found this to be the common term from people all around the world that use this term. I was recently in a Facebook group where somebody posted a photo of one of these keys and they said, hey, is this a skeleton key? And I gave an explanation on, you know, what a skeleton key is. And another guy jumped in and told me that skeleton keys don't exist and that only Americans refer to bit keys as skeleton keys. Kind of, I, I get what he was trying to insinuate there, but I just wanted to make this video for the person who was asking and people like them who genuinely want to know what these keys are called. So these keys are not the original key ever made as some people believe. The original key dates way back to you know the Egyptians where they basically created the first pin tumbler lock and the key didn't look like a normal key it looked more like imagine the shape of a toothbrush which basically if we look at you know this key here basically you know the toothbrush and then there's that curve you know and then it had these pegs that basically poked up it was a flat piece of wood and when you inserted the key those pegs lifted other pegs upwards and basically it worked like the first ever pin tumbler lock. So that was actually the first key I think that people can date back to. But this is a, another variation and one that became very popular in certain eras. And it evolved as these two keys look very similar in front of you, but they do have a, no pun intended, key difference. And I just want to show you guys what these keys are called and why they're called a skeleton key. So basically we'll get the skeleton part out of the way. Nowadays when you have a key that controls all the locks in the home and you know like one person may come in and have a key to one bedroom and the next might have a key to the next bedroom but their keys don't work on each other's bedroom locks but your key works on every lock in the home. That is what you refer to as your basic master key system. So you would call that a master key. Back in this day on these warded locks, when you had a key that controlled all of the locks in the home, but two other of your roommates, you know, we're just gonna say for the situation, their keys don't work on each other's locks, but yours works on both of their locks you had the master key, which was referred to as the skeleton key. That's where that name comes from. So when people say skeleton key, they're referring to a master key for warded locks. So just to get that out of the way. Now, when it comes to these two keys, these are not actually called skeleton keys as they're not master key to anything. These are, if we look here on the left, this is a bit key. This one is called a barrel key. I will show you the key differences here. We're gonna go ahead and set him out of the way real quick. And I've made this card to really help, you know, illustrate what I'm trying to say so you guys can follow along with me here. I went with a dim lighting to make it spooky for the skeleton story but it's it's proving to be kind of a bad idea here <laughs> so I don't know if I'm even gonna post this video after I I finish it but we're gonna go ahead and I'll just use this Y159 key as my little pointer tool here so just like on any other key the head of the key here is referred to as the bow the blade of the key, which you normally call the blade, on a bit key is called the shank. With, you know, your, we'll go ahead and grab this 
master lock M1 key, normally your shoulder on keys that you see nowadays is going to reside here right after the bow. On your bit key, your shoulder usually resides down here towards the post, which is the basically the rest of the shank after the shoulder. This is called the post here. This little tooth that comes off is actually referred to as the bit, which is why they call it a bit key. Even though I have heard locksmiths say they call it a bit key because you file a bit here and a bit there and they get really cute with it and I usually throw the key at them and walk out. But this is called the bit and these little cuts that you see here are called the warded cuts. Just to kind of show you guys the profile, these are the warded cuts that are filed out on this specific key. So just so that way you guys can go ahead and pause the video and memorize that or take notes and do what you will with that. And we're gonna go ahead and focus back on these two. So these keys are, they're made out of a lot of different types of metals. The most common that you find are made out of like iron, brass, bronze, and steel. Those are really the four most common. And these were used at one point, believe it or not, people didn't really care to lock their home. What they cared about and what they really cherished was a chest. Think about like a pirate's treasure chest, you know? And that's what people kept all of their valuables in. And they would use a key like this one. And really, there was nothing to break into someone's house at one point. Like, they didn't have flat screen TVs. They had, you know, lanterns, if that. And, you know, there was real no reason. But once you got into their home, they'd have a chest. And these chests were massive. So somebody would obviously see you in the village trying to carry you know, a 500 pound chest or something. So that's where everybody used to keep their valuables. Nowadays, everybody locks up their home with 5,000 different types of locks and whatever. But, you know, now we're looking way back when it didn't really matter, right? So this was the key of choice. And a lot of doors back then were really, really thick. So you needed a really long key to basically actuate the locks and the mechanisms. So there are other variations of these where you'll find these where they actually fold in half. They have like a hinge in the center. And this was because nobody wants to walk around with like a five inch key. So they made it to where it folded in half so you didn't have to carry around this massive weapon basically and it wasn't uncomfortable to carry. You could just fold it up, kind of like a pocket knife. So these had to reach a decent little ways into a lock to actuate the mechanism and all of the levers and whatnot. So they came up with the bit key, which is here. Now, over time, people learned how to break in and easily you know, pick these. One way was the way that we use now as locksmiths where you would take a blank version of a bit key, insert it, you know, you'd take a flame, smoke and blacken the bit here, insert it, wiggle it back and forth, look for a mark, and then file the marks until you could break into somebody's chest. So they realized that this was a bad idea. They were like, okay, people have figured us out. What do we do? They came up with their version of the time, which would be considered their high security upgrade, and they created the barrel key, which is the variation of a bit key, but hollowed out down the center. So you see this one is just a solid post. This one is hollow. Now what this does is it prevents you from using a blank like this one, as when you insert this key into its original lock, nothing is resisting it just lets you insert it and you could just you know mess around an impression all day long now if you try to insert this key there's a post in the keyway basically this has to fit around the post in order to be inserted fully into the keyway 
to where you can you know actually turn your key otherwise it'll stop you you know like midway or part of the way and you won't be able to even insert this fully to even you know make it work so this was their version of beefing up the security of the old warded locks so sometimes when you come across you know some people they'll have their cabinets cupboards boxes old chests you'll show up to some antique desks and even some old doors and gates that still use warded locks you'll want to make sure that you look down to make sure that there is or isn't a post and if there is a post you'll use a barrel key if you if there's no post you'll use a bit key or even in some cases if all you have is a barrel key it would work in you know this one's lock but this one wouldn't work in a warded lock made for a barrel key so it's just in, in layman's terms here to not make this sound so complicated now one thing that I have noticed of apprentices and um, a lot of people is they refer to a barrel key as something like this this is in a sense a variation that evolved from the barrel key but this is a tubular key you find these on vending machines washing machines at you know your public laundry mats computers new safes that they're selling at hardware pretty much a lot of things are using tubular locks and this is what you would call a tubular key so just as a side note if you're in the shop and someone brings this in to be duplicated and you don't know where they keep the tubular keys don't look around and say hey where do we keep the barrel keys or they're gonna throw this at you and laugh so you're just gonna you're gonna you know thank me later when you refer to a barrel key as its actual name this is a barrel key so I just wanted to go ahead and make this video just to kind of as a response to a person who asked someone who told me that the skeleton key isn't a real thing and anyone who asks you know what a skeleton key is and how to identify the difference between a bit and barrel key and that this is not a barrel key just to you know bury that into your brain so you never refer to that as a barrel key ever in your life but that's really all there is to this video um hopefully you guys enjoyed it you learned something from it maybe you did if you did and you liked it you can feel free to subscribe if you'd like to learn more about locksmithing and lock picking and installs and all the aspects of locks and keys thank you guys we're up to somewhere almost to 140 subscribers i think our giveaway is on this Friday, and we will be giving away our James Bond credit card lockpick kit. So if you guys haven't subscribed, all you got to do to enter is subscribe to the channel, drop a comment, and a like on any video that you would like. We're going to go tally up all of the names, throw them into the mystery box, and that will be Friday afternoon sometime. We will hold the drawing. So thank you guys again. Thank you for you know sharing the channel. We're reaching more people. We're inspiring more people to become locksmiths and you know get into the lock sport hobby, which is really what this channel is here to do is just inspire and help. So thank you guys again. I appreciate every single one of you. And that's really all there is to this video. So you know stay safe out there. Good luck at your new job. Good luck on your projects and have a nice day.